Good day, my brothers and my sisters. I greet you with Jesus' joy. What a privilege it is to be able to come into your homes, and what a privilege it is to be alive. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy and his kindness towards us. I want to take out the time to thank uh, the Lord for your pastor, my brother and friend, uh, Pastor Leonard Newton, for granting us uh, this invitation and opportunity just to share the word of the Lord with you briefly on today. So I want to direct your attention quickly to a familiar passage of scripture located in the book of Psalms, Psalm, Psalm 3, Psalm 3, and we're going to look at verses 1 to 3, Psalm 3, and we will focus on verses 1 to 3. The Bible states, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2 states, many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. But verse 3 states, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, the glory, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I want to read verse 2 where we will center our thoughts on uh, for this day. The Bible states, many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. I want to talk briefly on the subject today. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Let's talk to God in prayer. Father, we thank you, Jesus, and we praise you and we love you for this precious opportunity of being alive. We pray, dear Master, in Jesus' name, that you would speak through this word. And most importantly, also, Lord, that you would draw individuals to your precious bleeding side. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It was Dr. Warren Risby in one of his commentaries who made a very profound statement. He stated, when the devil talks to God about us, accusing us of the things that we have done, he's always telling the truth. But when he talks to us about God, the nature of God, the character of God. He is always telling a lie. My brothers and sisters, as I reflected upon uh, that particular statement, I thought about the lie that was stated in this text. David, in the context of our text in Psalm 3, he is running from his son Absalom. Uh, Absalom is chasing him in this Judean wilderness. And he has innumerable enemies, it seemed like, against him. And those enemies are stating to David, David, there is no help for you in God. Uh, there is no salvation for you in God. Uh, that God does not care about you. Friends of mine, I don't know about you, but oftentimes we subscribe to the devil's lie. Oftentimes we allow the circumstances that we are going through uh, to cause us to doubt the love of God, to cause us to doubt the power of God. But friends of mine, I've learned that if you and I are going to combat the enemy's lie, concerning our situation, concerning our God, concerning the character of God, we must combat it with God's truth. Oh, friends of mine, that's what David did in this text. David, friends of mine, he combated it with the truth. Uh, David heard those li that, that lie that there is no help for him in God, that there was no salvation for him in God. Uh, that God did not care about him in the given situation. But David said, I know the truth. And so David, friends of mine, in our passage of scripture in verse 3, he states the truth that is in opposition to the devil's lie. Verse 3 states, but thou, O Lord. Look, friends of mine, I like that first word in verse 3. Because you've got to have a verse 3 to come back your verse 2. He says, but, that word but is a conjunction. And friends of mine, we have heard that little 
song conjunction junction what's your function uh, that word but it outlaws everything that's before it <laughs> it is in opposition to everything that's before it uh, friends of mine that word but friends of mine it X's out everything before it and it focuses our attention on that which is after it in other words, friends of mine, you and I ought to live by a but in our lives. We ought to have a but in the vocabulary of our faith. I am sick, but. I am lonely, but. I am depressed, but. I am discouraged, but. As a saved believer, every last one of us are saved by a but. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible states in John 16 verse 33 that Jesus stated to his disciples in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So my brothers and my sisters, David gives us three assurances in this text that you and I ought to live by if we are going to combat the enemy's lie. The first assurance, beloved, that you and I should live by is that we have a sense of security. We have a sense of security. Look at the text. The Bible states here in Psalm 3, verse 3, he says, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Hallelujah. Uh, David says again, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. That, that, that word shield, friends of mine, evidently is an image of divine protection. It is an image where David is saying that God has covered him. And not only that God has covered him, but God presently is covering him. Uh, David, David is reminding himself in the midst of hearing the devil's lie, uh, that, 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 that God is keeping him, that God is protecting him. They have stated to David that there is no help for him in God, but David is reminding himself of the truth and the reality that in the midst of enemy territory, that God is protecting him. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I want to thank God today because no matter how many plots the devil may concoct, uh, no matter what the booby, how, no matter how many booby traps uh, the devil may try to create, every booby trap and every plot that the enemy tries to create, God is there to fold it. David is saying, in the midst of enemy territory, when Absalom and his armies are after me. He is saying that God has been a shield around me. God has protected me. God has covered me. And beloved brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but can you rejoice on today? That no matter what the enemy has tried to do to you, you can testify to the divine protection of our God. You can testify to the divine keeping of our God. Oh, beloved, I remember some time ago, um, Long time ago, actually, I remember uh, when I was growing up, um, I was afraid of dogs. And we had this big dog by the name of Stormy that stayed next door to us. And Stormy, friends of mine, when I would come outside, he would run in his yard. He would try to intimidate me and he would try to scare me. And I remember, friends of mine, one day the Lord opened up my eyes to a reality that had always been there. Uh, the fact of the matter is I had forgotten <laughs> uh, that there was a fence separating me and Stormy. Uh, that, that, that fence, friends of mine, even though Stormy would bark at me, even though he would get up on his fence and try to intimidate me, he could not get to me because the fence was blocking him from me. It was a protective barrier between us. And beloved brothers and sisters, God revealed something to me. He said, no matter how foreboding a uh, stormy may be, no matter how much he may bark at you, or no matter what he may do, remember, he can't get to you because there's a fence between you and him. 
And beloved, I thought about it, beloved, because the reason why the enemy cannot get to us and do what he wants to do to us, because God has, has laid up a fence between us. God has put a divine barrier between us. And that's why, the, that's why Paul states, if God be for us, who can be against us? I thank God that God is a sense of security around us. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, if we are going to combat the enemy's lie, not only must we combat it with a sense of security, but we also must combat it with a sense of God-given dignity. Look at the text here. The Bible says, uh, but thou, O Lord, art shield for me. I've got a sense of security, David said. But not only that, my glory, my glory, my glory. Friends of mine, you've got to understand again that David was up underneath the shadow of his own guilt, his shame. His son Absalom was stating to him that he was unfit to be the king of Israel because he had committed adultery and he had killed Uriah Bathsheba's husband. Everybody knew about this in the kingdom of Israel and they were saying that David was not fit to be the king of Israel, that David was not a man of God. David had lost his earthly esteem. He had lost his sense of dignity. But David realized, friends of mine, that God will give you your dignity back. David realized, beloved, that people will hate you based off of suspicion, but God will love you with the raw evidence of what he knows that you and I have done. And so David said, even though people have stated that I am a rascal, even though people have stated and remembered my sins, David is saying, even in the midst of this, I can hold my head up high because I've got a sense of God-given dignity. And my beloved brothers and sisters, quickly on today, I want to share with you that no matter what you have done, uh, no matter how many sins you have committed, God can give you your dignity back. Uh, no matter what you did last summer, God can give you your dignity back. And so David is simply saying the devil is a liar because I've got a sense of God-given dignity. I've got a sense of security because he's a shield around me. But last but not least, and I bid you farewell, not only does David have a sense of security that combats the devil's lie, that there's no help for him in God, not only does he have a sense of God-given dignity, but last but not least, brothers and sisters, David has a sense of joy, a sense of joy. I'm right here, the latter part of this verse here in verse 3 of Psalm 3. He states, thou art shield for me. He's a sense of security. Thou art my glory. <laughs> He's given me God-given dignity, but also the lifter up of mine head. He's given me a sense of joy. You got to understand something, friends of mine, this lifter up of my head is a picturesque uh, statement uh, that's in contrast or opposition to somebody who walks around with their head down, uh, somebody who walks around depressed and dejected and discouraged. Uh, David is simply saying that I have no right to be discouraged and depressed and dejected because God in the midst of what I am going through in the midst of everything that's arrayed against me. God has lifted up mine head. Oh, my, my, my. God has lifted up mine head above my enemies. God has kept my mind in the midst of craziness. God has kept my mind in the midst of frustration. God has caused me to walk in the midst of my enemies, not with my head down, but with my head lifted up. And beloved brothers and sisters, David is simply saying I can have joy and I can be encouraged because God is the sense of my joy. God has given me joy. And beloved brothers and sisters, I don't know about you and I don't know what you're dealing with on today.
But has God given you a sense of joy while you are dealing with that sickness, while you are dealing with that problem on your job, while you are dealing with that home situation? Has God given you a sense of joy? David says, even in the midst of this, this situation is not fully rectified, but God has given me joy. And that's why, friends of mine, Paul simply stated, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. God has given me a sense of joy. I remember in closing, I pastored in a small town many, many years ago known as Rolling Fork, Mississippi. I had a former head elder by the name of Melvin Smith. Melvin Smith, when I got to that district, had started, he started to have some eye problems, vision issues. And so he started to lose his sight. And Melvin Smith was a very independent, assertive man. And so he started to lose his sight and he was telling me, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I noticed, friends of mine, even though he was gradually losing his sight, that he never lost his joy. I remember, friends of mine, we used to sing a song in that small church entitled, What is This? What is this that makes people think I'm acting strange? What is this that makes people think I'm going insane? And it would, the song would go on, whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, I remember when we used to sing that song that Elder Smith used to get up in church and he used to shout. He used to praise the Lord. Tears would stream down his face. He would run up and down the aisle even though he was blind. Friends of mine, I noticed, beloved, that even though he was losing his sight, that he still had a sense of great joy. He still had immense joy that God was still the lifter up of his head, that even though he was dealing with a downward situation, he had an upward look. And beloved brothers and sisters, I thought about it because God will give you joy. <laughs> even though things are looking down, God will give you joy. Even though you don't know what to do, God will give you joy. And so David says, listen here to the devil's lie. There is help for me in God. Because I've got a sense of security. There is help for me in God. Because I've got a sense of God-given dignity. But David says there is help for me in God. Because I've got a sense of joy. And so in light of all of that, no matter what I'm dealing with, the devil is a liar. Let's talk to God in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we love you. I'm so thankful that when the enemy comes to us and he says to us that God is not going to help us, that God does not care about us. I'm so thankful that we can call him a liar. Reason why we can call him a liar, because God, you are our sense of security. The reason why we can call him a liar, because you are our sense of God-given dignity. The reason why we can call him a liar, because Father, you are our sense of joy. And we thank you, Father, that we've got the assurance of your truth, even when the devil is trying to sell us a lie. Keep this church family in the palms of your hands, we pray. And may they stand on the word of God, your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>